Hello everyone and welcome to the closing session of the 2023 SME Assembly. I hope you all agree that it has been a stimulating and thought-provoking 36 ye uh, years, no, hours, 36 hours <laughs> with important contributions from important speakers, whether they are distinguished professors, business leaders, or just starting, like Maria who has moved us with her speech. And from the most important group of all you, our delegates, the purpose of this session is to send you off with some concrete ideas of how SMEs can be supported in these uncertain times and in order to achieve a more sustainable European economy. Our keynote speakers will share their highlights of the past one and a half days and set out their top priorities for a sustainable and digital transition. Can I remind you that, of course, interpretation is available, should you need it. It is my pleasure now to introduce Oti Slotboom. She is Director of Strategy and Economic Analysis, DG Grow European Commission. Round of applause for her, please. Welcome, Oti. <laughs> Thank you. The floor is yours. No, thank you. Thank you. It is an honor to be here in the closing session after a very intensive uh, two and a half days at, the, at this year's SME Assembly. This assembly, maybe even more so than the past ones, has been a great occasion for mutual learning discussions, exchanges, uh, debates, and also many moments of strong emotions. The Youth Essay Competition, the Enterprise Promotion Awards uh, yesterday evening. I'm very proud to see that we are really moving ahead with, uh, with the time. No SME assembly is like the previous one. The discussions, the exchanges are very much on what is topical in the world in which we live today. We have heard a lot of things about the challenges which small and medium-sized enterprises face today. The lack of labor and the lack of the skills which are needed in our economy today were one specific topic which received a lot of attention. The new geopolitics have changed the world in which our small businesses operate. Access to critical inputs has become more of an issue than ever before. Ensuring a level playing field was a topic that uh, I heard come up in a very large number of sessions. Energy, inflation, you name it. In the new world, the policy makers have tried to create rules for the world and for the economy as it is today. Very often, these new rules also create new obligations for enterprises. New administrative burdens, reporting burdens, uh, accumulation of different regulations has been another topic and a challenge that has been discussed very widely. To pick up a few examples of the very rich discussions without being able to do justice to everything that we have heard in the past two and a half days, I wanted to start with the single market. We had the honor to host Dr. Letta, a former Italian Prime Minister, who gave us a little glimpse of uh, his upcoming report on what the future of the single market should be. And he promised that he will give us reasons to fall in love with the single market, as he, as he quoted in a very provocative way, Jacques Delors. And it is very much small and medium-sized businesses which stand to benefit the most from a well-functioning single market. 
Sustainability was another issue which was discussed in a large number of workshops and panels. Just to name one example, workshop on recycling raw materials, a very topical issue and a key issue for many small businesses. In the spirit of keeping up with our time and seeing new things every year which have become more important in the past year, looking at the projects which we harvested this year for the en Enterprise Promotion Awards. We had a lot of projects on sustainability. One of the category winners was about an early detection of financial difficulties in enterprises and being able to rescue small businesses before it's too late. In the social inclusion category and also in other categories, we had several projects which were put in place to help refugees integrate better by giving them entrepreneurial skills. We had a very inspiring Schumpeter lecture, which may be taught as a lesson as Europeans to be more forthcoming to see ourselves as, uh, as a resource and to have the courage to ask. Professor Sarasvati, in a very convincing way, told us to talk to the person who is sitting next to us in an airplane and say, can you give me 200,000 euros for my project? And not to be ashamed, because if you never ask, you never get anything. That's that. <laughs> I want to conclude with some words on what the European Commission is doing. As I have said to some people in the corridor already, this Commission has done more for SMEs in the past year than was the case in the earlier years of this mandate. We put forward the big SME relief package in September. In the area of better regulation, there's now a commitment to reduce reporting burdens by 25%. This is a marathon and not a sprint, but work has started and a lot of proposals for legislative changes have already been put forward. Also, in impact assessments, the impacts on competitiveness and the so-called SME test, applying to any SME-relevant new rules, have been given higher prominence. The EU SME envoy will be appointed by the end of this year. We have also put forward a proposal for a single market tax regime for small businesses, which, if approved, would allow any SME to opt for a voluntary scheme whereby they only report on their tax revenues to the tax authorities in the country where they have their head office and do not need to become familiar with competing tax regimes in several member states. To help on the financial side, we have put forward a proposal for a revised late payment regulation. That would help small businesses get their invoices paid on time and give them fair payment terms. On skills, we are working on several academies, Solar Academy, Batteries Academy. We are doing a lot and this assembly has certainly helped us in the Commission to get uh, great inputs, feedback, ideas. And I hope that everybody leaves home with a rich package of new thoughts, new ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Oti. Uh, let me introduce now Sandra Parti. She is chair of the INT section of the European Economic and Social Committee to give her analysis and recommendations. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, we 
you deserve your music. Yes, I get a bit of a <laughs> musical boost here. I hope um, that will help. Uh, thank you very much for the possibility. As I said, I'm um, chairing the Internal Market Committee of the European um, Economic and Social Committee. And our section, as the title suggests, um, focuses a lot, obviously, on what's happening in the single market, on the production and consumption that is happening within the EU. So um, thank you for this opportunity. So really, um, I would like to extend my warmest thanks to the European Commission and also to the Spanish presidency for organizing this conference, which really has been very, very rich in, in content that has meant, as has been mentioned previously. So um, I think it is a very good setting, a good platform to get some motivation again to maybe also get some inspiration and to also, of course, get new contacts. Um, I was very delighted that I had the possibility to take part in this event and it's really an honor to um, have this possibility for this contribution. And I would like to share with you a bit of the positions that we in the European Economic and Social Committee have been um, developing with regards uh, to the SME situation. We are obviously a big supporter of uh, SMEs because they do have a very, very crucial role to play when it comes to the transition to much more sustainability, which we are all attempting to achieve. While recognizing um, the diversity of MSMEs, um, like the micro, the small, the medium-sized enterprises and the differences in their needs, particular attention really needs to be paid to the smaller ones, the ones that uh, will have trouble um, really fulfilling all these uh, requirements um, that are being developed. So um, they do face, all of them, not only the small ones, all of them do face the uh, issue of high energy prices, shortages in the supply of materials and products, and dependence on third countries. Really all of those things have a major impact on SMEs. While at the same time, we do require them to change their production processes, to really decarbonize, um, to be more resource efficient, to recycle, um, to inter internationalize, to diversify, to digitalize. So there is a lot uh, that really comes down on a single entrepreneur, on a single company. And it's not surprising then that many feel overwhelmed um, and can't cope with this, this amount. And there needs to be support for them. There needs to be understanding for them. There needs to be promotion um, of things that can help them. And also an environment where they are not afraid of actually voicing their concerns. They do need simple and practical tools to deal with all those um, requirements that they are faced with. We hear from companies that uh, they try to be the least non-compliant as possible. So basically, they already have acknowledged um, that they can't fulfill all the requirements and they are just trying to, you know, be still somewhat compliant. That cannot be the goal. We talk about administrative burdens and um, that sometimes um, this monster, um, w which is um, you know the bureaucracy that comes from Europe, or at least that's the way it's perceived by many, um, really also leads to some um, EU fatigue. And that's a very unfortunate, if not dangerous, development. So we, it should be our goal, and I take this from here, that everyone really supports this, that we really want to ensure the existence and development of a diverse industrial sector, a wide range of sectors and producers and industrial ecosystems, and that includes SMEs and the social economy. So we do know about all the various um, yeah, challenges uh, that SMEs are faced with. And we don't really help when we can't coordinate um, the various activities, as uh, Uti also just mentioned, um, the puzzle that is the regulatory framework, the puzzle that is the different requirements, be it on taxonomy, be it from other demands and resources. So it's, it's becoming virtually impossible for SMEs to really keep up with this ever-changing regulation. What they need are really practical, practical tools. They really need to have uh, simple checklists, uh, possibilities to know what concerns them and how to deal with the requirements attached to it. 
This is really what we believe it should be done about it. Um, improve the regulatory framework, and that means the answer to bad regulation is not more regulation. It should be better regulation, and it has been recognized previously, but it's just not been translated in reality. So there really is quite a work to be done also here from the regulatory side. What I hear, what we hear from, from businesses is really um, that they are sometimes more afraid to um, have negative impact on their business from the regulatory side and that the requirements um, that they are faced with make them more queasy um, than actually the entrepreneurial risk with, with in itself is already quite, quite high. So, we really would like you know, to, to, to support the Commission, uh, to support all of you on um, reducing the administrative burden. We very much support the initiative and welcome the initiative announced on the 25% reduction. It is mostly about quality, not necessarily about quantity, but uh, it's already a start and um, this would be very helpful to be implemented. We really have to find a good balance also uh, with regards to the issue of uh, late payments, something that came uh, as part of the SME relief package. Um, we do know that uh, one out of four bankruptcies is linked to late payment. And that's not only business to business, that's also government to business situations. And those are particularly bad and should be avoided. So. We really welcome the idea of having an SME envoy finally. Uh, we are looking very much forward um, that this person is also going to be really a linchpin in addressing SME's concerns in a way that really helps them prosper and really stay in Europe and invest in Europe. Funding is a key issue for companies here. If they find greener pastures other, um, elsewhere, they will move. So we have to ensure that the pastures here are green, that they get financial support. And um, it is really important that we really ensure this framework um, for our SMEs and do whatever we can to um, achieve it. So in conclusion, the ESC has been um, a big supporter of SMEs because the global competitiveness of our companies here has a direct impact on the competitiveness of the EU society as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. I'd like to invite, yes, Rusha Thun to share the state with us. She is a member of the European Parliament. She will give uh, her insights and recommendations. Thank you very much. Uh, I can only join um, in, the th in the thanks that we have just heard. European Commission, thank you Uti, um, the Spanish Presidency, thank you very much for this meeting, especially to all those present here who had such a sincere and open exchange with us. It's extremely important for us legislators um, I came here with a group of five. We have in Renew Europe an SME task force led and moved by our spirit of province, <laughs> Martina Dlabajowa, who is with us. And the fact that we could meet with you um, prepares us also for better fulfilling of our task, namely produce good laws, of course, together with the Commission and with the Council. Um, we had here meetings with uh, SMEs, uh, with associations from the European Union and also from outside, very impressive one, with representation of Ukrainian organizations and it shows how they prepare to join the European Union and our common market. So listening to your proposals, to your ideas, and also to your concerns is most valuable to us, since we realize that there is a lot to do for our common market to function really. We achieved a lot 
but it is not done. There is a lot of work ahead of us. It's not completed. I didn't listen to Enrico Letta because I was in a different panel at the same time, but whoever meets him soon, please tell him that we will not fall in love with the single market because we are in love with the single market already. <laughs> And we want to improve it because we love it, because we realize how extremely important it is. And there is a lot to do. What comes to my head now, also from my activity in the Committee of Internal Market and Consumer Protection, the telecommunication sector needs a lot in order to become one. Uh, audiovisual services, we still have geo-blocking. I know it's controversial. It, it's still geo-blocked. Um, and uh, for SMEs, I think that seems uh, um, marginal or small, cross-border parcel delivery. And plenty of such examples. We have really a lot of work in front of us, but also when we listen to you, this bureaucratic burden that was mentioned several times already, there is, that's a huge challenge for all European institutions. Payment on time. I am responsible for this regulation, late payment, so you can imagine on what I spent most of the days here um, in Bilbao. Um, but what we hear most often is there are plenty of very good rules and regulations, but a better enforcement. This is something on which we all must work. The European Commission especially must really work on it, and the European Commission can be sure that we will all support it in order to have a better enforcement, because I couldn't agree more with my previous speakers. We want the pastures here to be green and juicy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so many insights that we're going to have a very quick Q&A session. So who would like to ask the first and only question? Yes. OK. <laughs> so quick. Thank you very much. Just wait to get a microphone. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, I am Liliana Busiok, and I am from the Republic of Moldova. And uh, recently we received the EU candidate status, and we are honored to be here as non-EU member. However, we are very eager to go and to move forward this path. And um, in this regard, my question would be, what you consider would be the next steps, not as a country, but as a business support organization that we should take now into consideration to have a better collaboration with the EU Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, one question, three answers, please. Uh, OT. Thank you very much for the question. Indeed, EU enlargement is very high on the agenda, and this is something which will change the single market and which will change the business environment. So as businesses, uh, we are already offering a lot of cooperation networking, and I would suggest that you take that all up actively and that you start to see the single market as your home market so that it is no longer about exporting to somewhere strange, but it is your home market. Uh, look at the ACI, the regulations. This will be the body of uh, the legal framework in which your businesses will uh, have to operate. We are there to help as the Commission to give more advice and to facilitate the adjustment. And as businesses, uh, take the courage to start operating more on the single market as from now. You don't need to wait for the accession. And there are many areas where we have uh, closer cooperation already now. 
Thank you, Oti. Sandra, please. Um, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question and welcome um, to the Club of uh, Candidates. So that's already a very good uh, development. Um, my advice is a bit um, sort of turned down, manage expectations. As, you've, as you might have heard here during these days, um, a lot of the companies in Europe um, have trouble uh, fulfilling the re regulation, fulfilling the obligations, being aware of what the relevant obligations for them are. So um, while the single market is, is a promise, um, it can be a very, very good thing. It also has its... Um, pitfalls and um, to manage the expectations of everyone involved that uh, it's not going to be some kind of paradise, some kind of magical gate you go through and then everything um, becomes uh, great, but that there is a lot of um, work involved, that there is a lot of um, difficulty and that will not change from one day to the other. And that needs to be also communicated to avoid what was what I was mentioning earlier, this EU fatigue, so um, that you do not come into the EU um, and into the single market with um, rosy eyes and, and too much expectations, but to be realistic about it and to really assess what you can do, um, what your capacities are, um, how you want to grow, if you want to grow, and then indeed um, become aware of the support possibilities that are being offered, but really manage the expectations um, and, uh, yeah, they might not be as great the opportunities as you first think. Um, they might be greater than you are afraid, but you really have to assess everything um, clearly and uh, level-headed um, before jumping feet first into the adventure that is the single market. Thank you. Rosha? Um, you know that, that these were exactly the fears that we have when I am Polish, mm -hmm. that we had when we were joining the European Union. We were very much afraid and I was very involved in preparing the referendum in Poland, not to paint the sky too blue because people will be uh, disappointed afterwards because finally it's a huge jump and it's very difficult. And. Uh, Right after we joined, the support for the European grew and not fell. You know, this is a very good jump, even if it's difficult. The support grew, and even today, you talk about the fatigue, and even today it is higher than during the referendum when we were joining the European Union. That shows that the fatigue doesn't touch everybody, even if there are sometimes governments that are not especially pro-European and respectful to the law, but the situation improves afterwards. And um, uh, let us be optimistic. <laughs> and, um, the other thing I would like to say is um, um, uh, yeah, there are countries, I mean, at last we will not be the new member states, so please join and then you will be the new member states and not us. But um, what I want to say is that there is the whole group of the, of the states that will become new member states, but already today I would not only adapt or um, uh, um, in, implement the whole acquis communautaire, but also come with ideas. It's not someone who does this union or this common market, it's, you know, we do it. And I mean, we um, renew Europe, we are in a close contact with Sluhana Rodu in Ukraine, and we meet politicians from the and, and practitioners and assemblies, etc. And there are so many brilliant ideas and observations they prepare so intensely for the membership, and I'm sure in your country too, that coming with ideas, remarks, etc. Just do this. This is very valuable for all of us to already, because we, I mean, the European Union has to prepare for this next enlargement. And it's very important that it happens well. So, so to say, you must prepare the institutions for this enlargement as well. So not only listen, but talk. Thank you very much. Round of applause for our speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take your seats. Thank you. It has been great listening to you. Thank you very much. And now to host the closing, a man who doesn't need introduction, Mr. Andre Mayer. Please. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Susanna. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please give it away for Susanna Rosa, our host for the last two days. <laughs> Susanna, has estado fenomenal. Gracias, muchas gracias. Um, let me also use this opportunity to have a mic and to speak to you, to thank my team and our fabulous contractors for a perfect delivery. I think they also deserve an applause. <laughs> and uh, a heartfelt Eskerik Asko. Thank you to our partners here in the Basque country. We felt very welcome throughout the time. And now we come to the last part in the program. We come to the handover from the hosts of today to the hosts of next year. Let me invite to the stage Yolanda Alcala Garcia, the Spanish SME envoy. Don't trip in the last minute, <laughs> Yolanda. <laughs> Yolanda. Many, many thanks. Many, many thanks to you and to your team. The Spanish presidency was our co-host, and you have been very, very good at that. Muchas gracias again, and Yolanda, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias. Uh, well, thank you, Andre. I'm going to speak in Spanish. And I'd like to start by repeating something I said yesterday at the European Enterprise Promotion Award ceremony. It's really been a pleasure to host this year's meeting. So thank you very much. We're coming to the close of this SME assembly for this year. And I'd like just to briefly go over the Spanish presidency of the European Council in the second term of 2023. Spain took on the presidency at a time of great challenge, both for member states and the European Union as a whole. Amongst other things, this scenario includes a shortage of raw materials and a specific products, high energy costs, and high inflation. All of this has accelerated the decarbonization process in key sectors, which is now a challenge and an opportunity for all of our companies and, of course, for SMEs also. With this backdrop, the Spanish presidency set four priority areas for the six months. The first was industrialization of the European Union and guaranteeing its strategic autonomy. Secondly, guaranteeing ecological transition and the environment. Third, boosting greater social and economic justice. And last but not least, strengthening European unity. On the first of those, reindustrializing the European Union and ensuring open strategic autonomy. Although globalization has been very beneficial for the European Union in terms of economic growth and social welfare, at the same time, it's caused a process of companies going elsewhere outside the EU, which has led to loss of strategic sectors and loss of uh, autonomy in sectors such as digital technologies, food, health and others. We need to buck that trend by attracting new companies and new people to Europe, generating wealth and uh, mitigating our external vulnerabilities. The work that we've carried out during the presidency on on this area has included the Critical Raw Material Act, which we've strengthened, the aim of which is to improve the single market to guarantee EU's access to safe, secure and sustainable supplies of critical strategic raw materials. And here, 
we have achieved an agreement between the Council and the Parliament just on this Monday, in fact. Coming to the second priority of the Presidency, moving forward in the green transition and environmental adaptation. Arguably, this is an opportunity to reduce our energy and raw material dependence. And of all of the many measures linked to this, I would flag the Need Zero Industry Act as an essential pillar of the Green Deal. The aim of this is for the EU to produce at least 40% of the technology it needs to achieve our environmental and energy goals by 2030. This draft was launched by the European Commission this March, and the Spanish presidency has really pushed it forward with negotiations in the Council so that we can achieve an agreement on the text in the Competitiveness Council to be held on the 7th of December. Additionally, the Spanish presidency has worked enthusiastically on the SME relief package, which includes, includes measures focused on SMEs to improve financing, liquidity, regulatory streamlining, and access to qualifications which are so necessary for this dual transition. Before handing over to our Hungarian colleagues, I'd also like to thank DG Grow for organizing the SME Assembly, which really gives us a unique space to talk about SMEs and SME policy, which is very cross-cutting, involving a host of levers, innovation, digitalization, sustainability, internationalization, and a long list of others. And this is why we attach so much importance to visi the visibility of all of these uh, proposals that are specifically devised for SMEs. And all that's left to say is that I hope this has been a very useful event for all of you here present and those following online. And we hope to see you next year in Hungary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yolanda. Muchas gracias. Stay with me for a moment. Next year, we will be in Budapest. And as an Austrian, I will be almost at home. So that's uh, very nice. Please welcome with me Unyadi Laszlo, uh, the Hungarian SME envoy and co-host for 2024. There he is. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for inviting us uh, to this year's SME Assembly in Bilbao. I think I speak for uh, everyone when I praise the exciting topics uh, brought here by the Spanish Presidency and the European Commission. And let's not forget about the wonderful hospitality of the Basque Country. Today I'm here to take over, as Andre said, the organization of the next year's SME Assembly as Hungary will carry on the duties of the presidency from July. This will be our first time uh, we have the honor of hosting the assembly because this great event was born uh, in 2012. However, the SME Envoy Network was launched in 2011 during the last Hungarian presidency. The first meeting focused on access to finance and reducing administrative burdens of SMEs. As we know, of course, these topics remain relevant, but as the world is constantly changing around us, we need to expand uh, the discussion with the new aspects of entrepreneurship. In my opinion, the ability to adapt is the strength of this network, as this is why the starting of the network was a really great idea by the Commission. I think have sufficiently uh, praised ourselves so far, so let's uh, move on to what are we dealing with next year. The SME Assembly is a forward-looking event, as Oti said, and we will define the program in this spirit together with the European Commission. The SME Assembly, uh, uh, as I said, a forward-looking event, and in carrying out the duties of the Hungarian presidency uh, in the second semester of 2024, our main goal is to ensure the smooth continuation uh, of the decision-making processes and the strengthening of key EU policies. 
The Spanish Belgian and Hungarian GO is working together to bolster the single market, ensure a level playing field, and, to re and remove any remaining barriers to promote long-term competitiveness and sustainable inclusive growth. The TRIO also promotes the EU's open strategic autonomy, circular and resilient economy, and competitiveness with a particular focus on SMEs. The measures are targeted at the entire micro, small and medium-sized enterprise sector and therefore supports both the development of internationally uh, successful scale-ups uh, and the stable functioning of businesses that ensure the livelihood for European citizens. Our main focus is to increase the productivity of SMEs, to enhance their growth along with the green and digital transition, while we also want to direct your attention to and highlight uh, the demographic challenge that Europe faces and its effect on enterprises. The SME Assembly provides a great platform to share our different and unique views, so we encourage this community to participate in the discussion every year. We are really looking forward to hearing your thoughts on these important topics. And in closing, I would like to congratulate the organizers of this event, as well as the winners of the European Enterprise Promotion Awards. We hope to welcome you all in Budapest next year. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, I hope you will enjoy this short film we prepared for you. photo. <laughs> So let's do a little photo and then you need to do a handshake for really handing it over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. With that, with that, I have to do a little handover myself. Actually, European SME Week 2023 will continue in this very place. Many of you will stay on uh, because uh, we are very happy to hand over to our colleagues from the Enterprise Europe Network who hold their annual conference here uh, in the next days. And I'd like to remind you, and I say that with a lot of conviction, the EEN delivers first-class service, direct, professional, and free of charge to entrepreneurs. This is the feet on the ground, the brains on the ground, that deliver a lot of help to uh, uh, entrepreneurs in Europe and beyond. They will continue, as I said, after lunch with their conference. Before they get the floor, before they get the rooms, I suggest we look at a little video that the Hungarian presidency prepared for us to get us in uh, the mood for Budapest, to get us in the mood for Hungary. Please. <laughs> in the wonderful atmosphere of Hungary's most colorful season. Explore the gorgeous landscapes. Find pleasure in the very splendor of nature and immerse yourself in cozy tranquility. Autumn awaits with new adventures. Taste Hungary's finest flavors and discover its unique wonders. Autumn in Hungary, create wonderful memories. Budapest, a city where you can experience a thousand years of history and culture every day. Where you can come home, where you can immerse yourself, where there's so much to explore, to delight and to amaze. Where you can take a rest or take off on an adventure where you can recharge and discover something breathtaking with every step. Look around, unearth hidden treasures, full of details, full of surprises, full of history and life. Budapest, shaped by heritage. 
safe travels home or an interesting conference if you stay here. Thank you very much.